Well, hi. I don't think I had plans on having anybody join me in the bathtub, but here we are. I bet you're wondering what you're doing here. We're gonna do a training exercise with my baby Asian water monitor, Flynn. I don't know how he's gonna respond to this. I know right now he's very pissed off at me. I get it, but I would much rather deal with his attitude now while he's small before he gets big enough to kick my butt. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna let that go. Then we're gonna let this go. Hi. <laughs> hey, honey. Do you like some tucker? Don't hurt me, please. I get it, man. I get it. You're not happy with me. I'm not happy with me. It's okay. In the meantime, while he's warming up, let's talk about Asian water monitors. Asian water monitors are not a species of lizard I recommend. No. They are the third longest lizard compared to the Komodo and the Croc monitor as well. They can get so big so fast and people underestimate this all the time. Honestly, if I hadn't have had experience prior of working with Asian water monitors of larger sizes than this little guy, um, I probably would have never wanted to jump into something like this. However, I had an amazing experience with Asian water monitors built incredible bonds and I know how wonderful they can be and how personable they can be. And they're absolutely fascinating. You see a giant lizard and you just are naturally drawn to them and you're dying to learn more. So that's why I personally uh, wanted to take on this challenge. So anyway, yeah, right now Flynn, he's a tiny little lad as you can see, but Asian water monitors can get anywhere from like seven to eight feet long. Uh, the one that I worked with, he's about seven and a half feet long and he weighed roughly 40 to 50 pounds. Um, I'm not even sure if this guy weighs, probably weighs a pound. I'm not sure, he won't be still enough for me to weigh. I know he's nice and chunky, so that's pretty good. That's a good sign. Um, their basking temperatures need to be up in the higher hundreds, anywhere from 120 plus to 140. That's just the basking spot. And then the ambient temperature needs to be in the low to mid 80s. Um, I always tell people, regardless of what reptile you have, anything below 77, with the exception of some amphibians and even some chameleon species, um, you want to be very careful with those temperatures because that can be a recipe for a respiratory infection and if you know respiratory infections you know them and they can be absolutely fatal so just to prevent that I always try to remember 77 and above should stay in the clear uh, from respiratory infections. Humidity is around 60-70% Flynn here in particular is around 65% uh, he has a custom built enclosure that's about four or five feet long and about three to four feet wide. However, somehow he's able to get out of it. So he's not in that enclosure. We're gonna wait till he gets a little bit bigger, a little bit fatter, that way he can't get out of it. So right now he's just in the 75 long. Um, not really my cup of tea, but it's fine, it's temporary, and I know he has something much bigger and much more exciting to go to as soon as he gets a grip. Their lifespan also can be 15 to 20 years, kind of depending on the care. So that's something to keep in mind as well. This is just not a lizard that I recommend for beginners at all. Even the most intermediate and professionals out there don't want to deal with this type of species because of how large they can get and how rambunctious they can be. They can have some major attitudes, kind of reminds me of a Nile, not as severe as a Nile, but kind of in the same boat. Um, but it's still definitely a species that you have to work with. You have to, <laughs> you just have to get through the anxiety and the roughness of it, like I'm going through right now, and get them to calm down and to tame down. That way they're so much more handleable and personable and easier to handle in the future when they're much larger and are stronger than you. <laughs> So he's just been watching me talk this whole time, which is good. He's got to get used to my voice. Um, my method, my plan of attack here 
is to kind of approach this how I trained Giles, my blue iguana, which was to sit in a bathtub, have them on the other side, me on one side, <clears throat> to kind of get them used to me and also like talk to them and things like that. So I'm trying to do that. Um, I will say this is a much faster species than an iguana, surprisingly, um, and much more ferocious. He's got a longer neck. So he can stretch back and try to get me and he's tried several times already and somehow I have dodged every single bite. <laughs> dodge, dip, dip, dive in, dodge. So um, it can only get better from here and it's going to be scary as heck because he's got that neck. He's got that neck. But um, here we go. <laughs> so I actually just ditched my tripod because I thought maybe that was scaring him and I did see him move a little bit so that's promising. Let me see if I move around. Oh no. I'm moving around too much. <laughs> okay, okay. Alright. This is fine. This is good. This is a start. Don't eat me. Don't eat me. <laughs> okay this just in he might use me to get out of the tub oh 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 no <laughs> honey no don't go in there oh please just don't bite me man where did he go hi oh is it warm okay <laughs> so um i thought he was going to use me to, you know, get out of the bathtub because I've had that happen before and I didn't want to put it past him. Um, but instead, he has chosen warmth. And some of the warmest parts of your body consist of the back of your neck, the armpit, um, and the crotch. So, I guess we all know where he went. He's currently... Right here. So, um, I think this is still a really good bonding experience. Not what I planned. <laughs> I was expecting him to, uh, eat this food that I sweat over a hot stove making for him, but um, that's okay. I'm gonna take this time and, you know, just spend time with him, let him use my body heat. Uh, I'll put his food in his enclosure. He'll probably eat it in the morning. Um, and I'm just gonna take this time to really just appreciate that he's not running. He's not trying to bite me. He's not trying to hurt me. He's just trying to get warm on my leg and stuff so yeah I would say this is successful <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna it's gonna be successful this is fine did I think it was gonna go perfectly nay did I think this was gonna happen no no I didn't but that's okay that's okay out a crotch and now he's here he's very fast looks like he's going back into crotch <laughs> and now we're back it's just like my knee my leg like this is fine just be still you're making me anxious
until next time guys thank you so much for watching this video be sure to like subscribe all the things and uh, i'll see you next time bye